And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to be making one of my favorite kinds of food. We're going to go to Italy today. We're going to make a chicken pasta bake, and we're going to put that in the oven. It's a meal in one. Got your veggies, got your meat, got your pasta, got everything. And to serve alongside that, we're going to have a cheesy quick bread that you're going to make yourself, and it's easy, and you can do it. And then just a garden salad with just a purchased bottled salad dressing to go along. Alongside. We're going to get started. I have a pot of water already boiling on the stove and I'm going to add some salt. I've got these gloves on because I'm going to be doing the raw chicken for just in just a second. So we're going to use gloves today. We're going to add salt to the water. Remember, always add your salt before you add your pasta so that it doesn't pit the bottoms of your pans, because it will if you put the salt in there first. I'm going to add 16 ounces, or just one box. Now, I'm using today the, um, the, the uh, it's just Rotel pasta. You could use ziti, you could use penne. I'm just using the, the Rotel because I want those little nooks and crannies in there so that the sauce can get in there and do its thing. But we just want to cook that till it's al dente. It takes about... I don't know, seven or, or eight minutes. Don't put your lid back on once you add your pasta or you'll have a boil over and that's a mess. Now I've got a large skillet preheating and I have one pound of chicken tenders. Now these are just the little tenders that you can get um, boneless, skinless in the grocery store. You could use boneless, skinless chicken breasts if you wanted to. You could substitute. Now, what, let me, let me before I talk about substitutes, I'm just going to take each one of these. I'm going to do about three at a time. I'm going to cut them in one-inch pieces, and I have my skillet preheating to medium-high heat. But if you like dark meat in this recipe, you could substitute boneless, skinless thighs if you wanted to. I just prefer the white meat, but if you like dark meat, by all means, put the dark meat in here. It'd be perfectly delicious with that. But you could use the boneless, skinless breasts and just cut them into one-inch pieces. That's fine. You don't have to buy the tenders, but that was on sale at my store, so that's what I bought. Just about one-inch pieces. We want to kind of spread them out a little bit. Take my gloves off here. So my hands did not touch the raw chicken. Now, my skillet is preheating. I want to salt and pepper my chicken before I cook it. Love salt and pepper on everything. We're going to add a couple of tablespoons of, I'm using olive oil, but you can use canola oil or vegetable or whatever you like. I just typically tend to use the olive oil whenever I'm cooking Italian food. We're going to add our chicken right into that hot pan. Let's just get, I love these little mats, these little flexible cutting mats that you can get anywhere. I use these for my raw meats. And then you can just stick that in your dishwasher. If you have a dishwasher, you can just put these mats in there where you can't put your wooden cutting boards in there. But you can those little plastic mats. Stick it in the dishwasher, wash it with hot soapy water, and you're done. I had an email the other day about that. A lady emailed me. She liked this cutting board, and I was, you know, explaining to her where, how, to, how the cutting boards work. But I mentioned, don't ever, if you have a wooden cutting board, don't ever put raw meat on your wooden cutting board. This is for vegetables and other kinds of chopping, but no meat goes on here, no raw meat. Now, I slice cut meat, but not raw meat on your wooden cutting board. And, you know, a couple times a year, sand it down with just regular sandpaper and then add food-grade mineral oil to your wooden cutting boards, and they will last you a lifetime. This one is, you know, several years old. I've got one at home that I use all the time that I've had for probably 10 years, and I still use it. They will last forever if you take care of them. And I like wooden cutting boards. Don't use glass cutting boards. And we're going to do some programs on just kind of 
basic 101 sort of cooking, but don't use glass cutting boards. It ruins your knives. While our chicken is browning, I'm just gonna stir the pasta real quick. While the chicken is browning, I'm gonna cut up a green pepper and an onion. Now, if you don't like green pepper, leave it out. You know, it's that simple. Or maybe if you have a red pepper at home, you could use the red pepper. That would be delicious in here. That's my favorite. I love red peppers. But if you don't have one, just use a green pepper. If you don't like green pepper, leave it out. It's okay. It's your cooking. You can do whatever you want. Recipes I find, truthfully, I'm just cutting it into small pieces. Recipes, with the exception of baking, are just starting points. Jumping off launching pads for you. And you can take recipes and customize them to yourself. Now, baking's a little bit different. Baking is pretty much a science, if you will, and you have to, you know, kind of watch your measurements on things with baking. But regular just cooking of main dishes and side dishes and that kind of thing, use your imagination. Customize it to what your family likes. Now, our chicken, we want to brown this and we want to get it cooked through. Sometimes I switch to tongs, which I think I'm going to do right now, so that I can get all those little pieces turned over. I love chicken. If you wanted to make this dish vegetarian, would be real easy to do that. Just leave out the chicken and just proceed on with your vegetables and the pasta and the sauce that we're going to talk about in just a minute and leave the chicken out. But I like it to be a little heartier uh, main dish meal for my family, so I'm adding some chicken. You could add anything you wanted. Any protein you wanted would work in this dish. Now, we've got our pepper, but I don't want to add that right yet. We're going to add just a medium-sized onion to our dish. And I find that, you know, most of my dishes, this kind of thing starts out with onions. I love onions. I love them cooked. And they just add so much flavor. And a lot of dishes from around the world, really, they have a base of things that they start with. Most include onions. Maybe you don't like onions. You know what? I find some people don't. And I, and I don't like raw onions. But if you don't like raw onions, try them cooked, and you will see there's a big difference in the flavors. We want to cut our onion about the same as our green pepper. No big science to this. Just chop it up. If you have a chopper, use your chopper. I do sometimes. But when I'm just doing a little something, I usually just use my knife. Let's stir your chicken again. I'm going to go ahead and add my peppers and my onion to my chicken. I want to saute that to get the vegetables softened, bring out some flavor. Now, it's important when you're cooking that you layer your flavor. So go ahead and salt and pepper your vegetables, your peppers and onions that you've added in there. I'm going to take a quick break. And over the break, all I'm going to do is peel and chop a couple of cloves of garlic and add to the pan. I'll be right back with you in just a minute. Chapter 23, verse 2 says that he leadeth me beside the still waters. Have you ever been at a place where there's just this calm lake or a little stream or just this little trickle of water? You know what you feel when you sit beside that and you just look out over the glass on top of the water? You feel peace in your spirit. The Lord is truly one that wants you to feel peace inside your spirit. There are times when he brings the calm in our lives, when he brings the just the peaceful waters that flow in your spirit, and he does that to calm your spirit. Today, would you allow him to lead you beside the still waters of your soul. Welcome back. Now, all I've done is 
just drain the pasta right here and added a couple of cloves of garlic to our chicken. We are going to add one of my favorite ingredients, and that's black olives. If you don't like them, leave them out. I love them. Just going to chop them a little bit because I thought, quite honestly, that I got sliced olives, and I didn't. I got plain black olives, whole. That's okay. Mm. Just chop them a little bit. Not too fine. I don't like them chopped real fine. I want to taste it when I bite into it. And add that. Going to add about a tablespoon of rosemary, teaspoon somewhere in there, and a couple of teaspoons of dried oregano. Mm. I wish you could smell this. It smells so good. Now, to that, I'm going to add just a jar of my favorite pasta sauce. You can add whatever kind of pasta spaghetti sauce that you like at your store. I'm adding my favorite. You add your favorite. Doesn't matter the brand, doesn't matter the type, whatever you like. Go ahead and cut your heat off because really that's good and done. We're just, we're going to bake it. So oven is preheated to 350 degrees. Now you could actually heat that through, serve that over pasta and boom, you've got dinner, but we're going to bake it. Now I drained the, uh, the rotel. See all the little, little nooks and crannies. I love pasta. That's the only way to tell pasta's done. Taste it. You should have just a tiny bit of resistance in your mouth because you want it to be al dente because it is going to bake. We're going to stir that all together. Mmm. Yum, yum, yum. I have a casserole dish here that I'm going to bake it in. Just stir that all together. Yummy, yummy. I really do wish they'd invent that smell of vision thing <laughs> to where you could smell what we smell here. This pan is heavy, so be careful. And pour it into your baking dish. Let's see if we can get this in here without spilling it all over the floor. And we did. Mm. Somebody asked me the other day what my favorite type of food is. And I guess if I had to pick a favorite, it would be Italian. My dream is to go to Italy. I've never been. But one day, hopefully. I don't know. But that's my dream. I love Italian food. I like to just eat my way through Italy. Now, to our pasta bake here, we want to add some mozzarella cheese because what is pasta without cheese? I've got two cups of part skim mozzarella. I just buy the shredded kind. You get whatever your family likes and just kind of spread it out. And clean hands are a cook's best tools. God gave you the best tools you have right here on the ends of your hands, but make sure they're clean. And then I want to add a cup of grated Parmigiana Reggiana cheese. Mmm which is my favorite cheese. Love it. Absolutely love it. 350 degrees for about 25 minutes or so, and you will have a wonderful, wonderful meal for your family. All right, now our pasta's in the oven, and we are going to make a cheesy bread to go alongside it. So I have a quick, easy recipe for you that you can make any night of the week. We've got a cup and a half of just a baking mix. You know the ones in the grocery store that have everything in them and you just need to go from, from there. I'm adding about a teaspoon of garlic powder and about a tablespoon of just Italian seasoning mix. If you don't have Italian seasoning mix, make your own. Just mix some rosemary and some thyme and some oregano and just basil and mix them all together. I'm gonna add just a pinch of salt because I think you need a little salt, although the baking so baking mix has some salt in it. I'm going to add, now I bought at the grocery store a uh, cheese blend, and you can find them like a six cheese, cheese Italian cheese blend or a four cheese Italian cheese blend. That's the, that's the ones I'm talking about. I actually found one yesterday that had six cheeses in it. I was real happy because I love cheese. 
I'm gonna add, this is just more grated Parmesan, and I'm gonna add about half of this. This is about half a cup. So I'm gonna actually sprinkle some of that over top. Stir all that together. Make a well in the center of your mixture and add one egg that you have lightly beaten and about half a cup of milk, and that's it. And you're gonna just mix all that together. Got your oven preheated. Now you can bake this um, after you take your, your pasta out of the oven, or if you have double ovens, put another oven to 400 degrees. Now it's gonna be thick, but that's okay. That's what you want. And we've got just a regular little baking dish here. Don't over mix this. Mix it to where it's moistened, and that's enough. Stop. When you get to that point, stop. Don't over mix it, because you'll be sorry if you do. Let me get a little thing here. It's thick. That's okay. That's what you want. Mm. Take your fingers, pat it out. You just want to have a thin layer, sticky too. Sometimes you just need to add a little bit more of your baking mix to it, and that's okay. You can do that. I'm gonna do that right now, just like you would flour, but substitute your baking mix, if I can get it open. I always, whenever I open the box, um, put mine in a Ziploc baggie. Just sprinkle a little bit of extra baking mix over top of that, just so you can work with it a little easier. Like you would anything else. And just pat it out lightly onto your pan, evenly. Mm. Two tablespoons of melted butter. Drizzle over top. Mm. Take a spatula and kind of just spread that around. And remember, we had a little bit of the extra Parmesan. We want to sprinkle that over top of the final little thing here. This needs to go into a 400 degree oven for about 25 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that, until a toothpick, when you insert in the bread, comes out clean, just like you would test a cake, you're gonna do the same thing. Insert a toothpick, when it comes out clean, your bread is done. It'll take about 25 minutes at 400 degrees. I'm just gonna get this in the oven, take another quick break, clean up, when I come back, we're gonna make a quick, little, easy, simple, simple dessert that you can do with your family. I'll be right back with you in just a minute. Right, now our pasta's baking, our cheese bread is baking, and we're gonna make a quick, easy dessert. I like easy desserts. You know me, I don't, I'm not a, a person that wants to spend hours making a dessert. Now there's one I make that, that takes two days, but other than that, I want easy and quick. I'm just using, I love these little tartlet shells that you can buy in the baking section, in the baking aisle where you get the flour and the jello and the puddings and all that stuff. These wonderful little mini graham cracker crusted tart shells. Love them, love them, love them for a quick, easy dessert. You, this is a recipe, you could use whatever kind of pudding that you like. I'm choosing coconut cream pudding, one box, and I go a little bit shy of two cups, about, I don't know, a cup and a half or so and mix cold milk with the pudding. The reason that I chose coconut is because my favorite pie is coconut cream. Absolutely adore coconut cream pie mm, with meringue on top. But I lack the patience to make meringue most of the time. So I do this and it's just quick, easy, and it hits all the flavor notes in my mouth. It, it hits all those little taste buds that really want that coconutty flavor. Here's a spoon, let me scrape down the sides of my bowl. And I like just these quick little easy pudding desserts. I think they taste really good. And this is just an easy little something for your family, a quick little treat. Now this particular one takes a couple of minutes to set up. Just, you know, a couple minutes after you stir that in. Let it set for just a minute. We're gonna sprinkle some coconut over top of it and it's gonna be yummy. I love coconut. Love it, love it, love it. Mm. Just buy the pre-sweetened little shreds of coconut. Just adore it. Now, let that set for just a second. 
while that sets up. And again, you could substitute whatever kind of uh, pudding that your family likes. I've done white chocolate. I love the white chocolate. And it, in the fall, sometimes they come out with this pumpkin. It's a limited thing. And I buy like six or eight boxes of it while I can get it and keep it be, to, to have, you know, throughout the winter. But it's like a pumpkin spice type flavored pudding. And I use these little shells and then put whipped cream over top of it. My mother actually did that first. And Mike tasted it and he went crazy over it. So we make those in the, um, you know, when it comes out around in the fall, November, Thanksgiving season is usually when you see it hit the stores. But it's delicious. Now, you see our pudding is thickening up. So we can go ahead and pour just a little bit. I have one pack of six of these little things because that's how they come. Just pour this in there and we can go ahead and get this done and then chill it and it'll firm up even more so. And you can see the little flecks of coconut in this one. Again, this one is coconut cream, but you use whatever your family likes, white chocolate or chocolate or vanilla, banana, whatever, pistachio. My mom likes pistachio pudding. Mm. And just sprinkle a little bit of coconut over top of each one of these. It's just a special little treat dessert for your family, a little sweet treat to end your meal. And because I believe everything tastes better with chocolate, as if this isn't good enough, and I could eat every one of these myself, but I happen to have a chocolate bar in my pantry. So I'm going to take my little microplane shaver, and I'm just going to shave a little bit of chocolate. This is dark chocolate because that's what I like. And just shave a little bit of chocolate over top of these. Oh, yum, yum. Dark chocolate actually is very healthy for you. I don't know if you knew that or not. But if you can have sweets and you can have the chocolate, have a little bit of dark chocolate every day. It's loaded with antioxidants. They say it's good for your heart. Only excuse I need to eat it. Now, we're gonna set those in the refrigerator and we're gonna let these firm up for just a couple more minutes. Okay, now we have got our meal done. And let me tell you, I'll have to confess I've been sneaking bites. <laughs> Here's our pasta bake. And it's delicious. And we've got just a wonderful cheesy topping over top of the chicken with the green peppers and the onions and the olives and just the jarred marinara pasta sauce over top. And then we spiced it up with a little garlic and seasonings in there and then put some mozzarella and Parmesan cheese over top. And here's our delicious bread. Look at that bread. Oh, it's just delicious. This is our wonderful, easy little cheesy bread that we made with just a box baking mix that you can buy in any store with some cheese and some milk and egg, and it just could not be easier. And our great little coconut tarts. This is coconut uh, cream instant pudding that you buy in the grocery store in those little wonderful little, my, my favorite little dessert thing. Perfect serving, let me tell you. I've already eaten one. <laughs> but this is the perfect little portion control for you. And we just use banana cream pudding with a little bit of coconut and shaved some chocolate over top. Alongside this, I would serve it with just a simple little green salad. You know, you can buy those pre-mixed salad mixes in the store today. Just a, whatever blend you like. I like the little Italian blend that has a little radicchio and some uh, romaine lettuce. Just use, make your own little vinaigrette or just use whatever kind of salad dressing that you like. I like Italian dressings. Anything that's a vinegary type, just, you know, or you can make your own with olive oil and any kind of vinegar or olive oil and lemon juice. Just drizzle it together with some salt and pepper. Maybe a little shallot in there would be delicious. But here we go. Here's our wonderful little meal that is truly, you know, it's all in one. This bite's got chicken and vegetables and pasta and cheese and everything in it. And I promise you, even the pickiest little eater in your house will like this because it's got wonderful flavors. It's not overpowering. It's just delicious. And here's our bread. Mmm. 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 Pardon me, my mouth's full. You have to try this. Couldn't be easier. Mix it together in a bowl, put it in a pan, bake it in the oven. It's delicious. And our great little salad. Mmm. Wonderful meal. I love salad. I eat salads. I eat a lot of 
green lettuces and things like that with my food. So just, you know, buy whatever kind you like. Use whatever kind of dressing you like. Make this meal for your family. Download the recipes. Try it. Let me know what you think and, and, you know, shoot me an email or something. Let me know how your family liked it. If you have any ideas that maybe you want to see on future Everyday Manna episodes, just drop me a note and let me know what you want to see because this program is designed for you and to help you in the kitchen. And I do want to thank you to all of you who have let me know via email or meet me out or whatever, stop me, call whatever you do to let me know that you're trying the recipes and that your family is coming together and you're getting your kids in the kitchen. That is truly one of the goals of this program is to get families together to sit down to a meal, to share their day, share their lives one with the other. You will be amazed at how much stronger your relationships will be with your children, with your husband, with your wife, with your family, with your friends, when you sit down and eat a meal together that you have cooked and you have prepared with love, which is the best ingredient that you can put in anything. Serve this to your family today. Show them that you care by cooking for them. We will see you next time on Everyday Man. Thank you for watching Everyday Mana with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Mana, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.